Hey guys, Mike from MasterMix.com here, and in this video we're going to talk about mixing snare drum and how to get it to cut through in a dense mix. We're going to talk about how to get body and weight and get the snap out of it that you need in order to really sound good in a rock mix. So let's give it a listen. Pretty straightforward, right? So now I'm going to bypass all of the plugins on the snare channels here. We're going to solo the snare top. And let's just listen to the raw snare top as we got it. So the first thing I really notice is that there's a lot of cymbal bleed. And I notice that in the verse, especially, there's a lot of hi-hat bleed. It sounds like the hi-hats were right next to the microphone on the snare. Yeah, that's not really good at all. So we want to make sure we clean that up. So I'm going to open up this SSL channel here from Waves. And I'm going to unbypass this. So first things first, we got a gate going on here. And with the gate, we've set the threshold so it's just really clamping down on the snare hits. And I've got a fast attack, fast release on it, so it's really only the snare hits. And uh, let's give that a listen. So the snare's coming through here. Now, the important thing is the range. Because we have so much cymbal bleed going on, what I wanted to make sure we didn't have was like big spikes of cymbals coming through every time the snare hits. So rather than go like this with the range and just get only the snare, to me that sounds unnatural, right? And if I back it up here, it sounds like every time the snare hits, we get this little burst of cymbals, like pss, pss. So instead of leaving it like that, I decided to back it off just a little bit, just to make things sound a little bit more natural. We're, we're going to get a little bit more of the symbols in the background, but with the gate, we're really suppressing all of that stuff. So let's listen to that. So it sounds pretty natural like that. We're not really getting those big spikes of symbols. It's not as obvious when we've got the range set like this. All right, now let's move on to the EQ. So one of the first things I put on here was a low cut at 80 hertz, and that's just to get rid of some of the low end rumble that we don't really need. Then after that, started off with the low frequency boost here, about 9 dB, 10 dB at about 200 hertz here. And this is just to add a lot of beef to the snare, make it sound really big and meaty. Let's listen to that. So let me put it to zero. Definitely a lot thinner when we take that away, right? All right. Up next, we've got a little bit of a cut happening here. It's around 680 hertz. And this is just to get rid of some of that mid-range honkiness that we'll get. So let's listen to that. So this is the frequency I'm cutting. And I've got a, on a fairly narrow cut here. All right, and moving on, the next thing I've got is a little bit of a boost, 3.1 dB at 3K, and this is just to bring out a little bit of the stick definition here. So we put it at zero. And we'll put it back in. Back out. And back in. So it's a little subtle, but this is the frequency here that I'm really boosting. Just adding a little bit of that rattle from the snares. 
And then lastly, the really big boost is happening around 8K, and I've got 9 dB of boost here. And this is really bringing out all of the attack and the crispiness of the snare. So let me put this at zero. So with this out, it sounds really dull. And then when I put it back in, you'll notice that that crack starts to show up again. So now it's got some bite. Let me take it out. So yeah, definitely adding quite a bit there. So let me take out the entire SSL chain here and we'll hear what it sounded like before and after. So this is out. And with it in. So the snare sounds a lot tighter, a lot bigger. We got more snap. It can cut through the mix a lot better. Let's hear how it sounds in the context of the mix with it and with it out. So first out. Go, no, I'll never go. Yeah, baby, if you felt like I can make you mad like we can be a little more. Baby, come inside. We can make a little light of our own. Our own. Maybe one day I can love you better. So it's got a little bit more beef going on there. So the next thing I've got is the Waves CLA-76. This is an 1176 compressor. And I've got it with the fastest, or sorry, with the uh, slowest attack setting and the fastest release. And what this allows us to do is just get the transient of the snare to come through and just return back to zero gain reduction really quick with, these, with the fastest release. Let me bring this in. Go, no, I'll never go. So this is within. Just bringing it down a few dB. With it out. And back in. It just adds a little bit more point on the front of the snare. And out. All right, and next we've got the Waves Rec 6. And because of all the extra cymbal blue that we had in there, especially when we boosted that high boost at uh, 9K there, or 8K, that one really brings up a lot of the cymbals. So what I try to do with this next plugin is just reduce a little bit of that. I've got a high cut happening around 13.7K. That's just to get rid of some of the extra shh, like upper kind of distracting frequencies of the symbols, and I also noticed that there's a bit of a resonant frequency happening around 7.8k, so let's listen to what these sound like with it out and with it in. With it in. So with this high cut, it basically just gets rid of some of that extra crispiness of the hi-hats and the cymbals. And then this 7.8k boost. Just this little harsh frequency that's happening there. So we'll cut that. All right, so the next plugin is really kind of the secret sauce with the snare, and this is the Pro Tools stock lo-fi plugin. So what I found was happening was once we added the CLA-76 in, it kind of started to eat up a little bit of the body of the drum. It made it really attacky, which is great. That's what we want. It helps us cut through the dense mix. But we started to lose some of the weight of the drum. So this lo-fi plugin, what it does is it adds some distortion and just really beefs up the snare, it actually makes it sound a lot louder and a lot heavier and meatier. So let me first pull down this distortion setting and I'll introduce it and show you what I mean. So let me bring this up a bit.
So already everything sounds a lot meatier. Let me pull it out. And back in. So the drum has a little bit more length to it. The low end is a little more pronounced. Just really in your face. And it also sounds a significant amount louder. But if you look at these meters, it's not really changing the level of it too much. So let's listen to that. So with it out first. So sitting around minus 12 here. are pretty low still, but it sounds like it's significantly louder. So we're about minus six with it in and with it out. We're still hitting around that minus six mark. On a couple of the hits at least. So this lo-fi plugin really allows you to bring up the volume of the snare in your mix and just to add a little bit more weight to it. Now you don't need this specific lo-fi plugin. There's a lot of different saturation plugins out there that'll do the same effect. Uh, I know there's a bunch by Sound Toys. They have their Decapitator or the Devil Lock. Those are two great ones to check out as well. And uh, most software comes with some sort of saturation plugin. So check it out, see what you've got. I'm sure you've got something that can do the job too. Then lastly, I've also got an L1 limiter by Waves. And this is just to tame some of the peaks and also just to get a little bit more level out of it. It's not, it's not really doing too much, but I know going to the chorus, there's a couple of big snare hits. Yeah, still not really taming a whole lot out there. Just kind of controlling it. Here it is with it out. And with it in. All right, so moving on, we've got the snare bottom track. And let me disable these plugins. Oops. All right, so here is the raw snare bottom track. So with this drum part, there's a lot of ghost notes in the in the performance. And if you'll notice with the snare top, I just kind of wanted the big snare hits to come through, and that's how I set the gate. I didn't set it so that we're getting those ghost notes, because if I did that, then we'd start to introduce way too much of the cymbal sound. So I left that for the snare bottom track, and I didn't add a gate on the snare bottom, just so we can really get the those ghost notes to come through. And then I added a Waves Rec 6 plug in here. So first let's listen with it out. And then with it in. So we've got a few things going on in this plugin. First, we've got a low cut at 180 hertz. We've also got another cut happening around 489 hertz. And this is just to get rid of some of the, the mid honkiness. Let's listen to what this frequency sounds like. It's pretty nasty. So we'll cut that. Then we've got another boost happening around 2.8K, and this is just to bring out a little bit more of a stick definition as well. And then again, another big boost at 7.6K. That's just bringing out a lot of that upper snare stuff. You can hear the snare wires a little bit more. So here it is with the plug-in bypass, and then with it back in. So yeah, you can hear that we're getting a little bit more of that snap going on there. 
And I've also got another Waves L1 limiter going on, and this is just again to just kind of tame some of the big peaks and add a little bit more volume out of it. Not a whole lot going on here. So now let's hear how the two sound together. First I'll play the snare top, and then I'll bring in the snare bottom. And snare bottom. So you can start to hear those ghost notes cut, cut through a little bit more. And just snare top. And snare bottom as well. And lastly, I also added a snare sample in here, and this snare sample is just a bit of a room sound. So let's just listen to that in solo. That sound there is just to add a little bit more length to the drum. It's got a really big kind of reverby sound to it, and uh, I just wanted to get a little bit more size out of the, out of the snare drum in the context of the mix. So let's uh, let's check out what I've got on this. I've got a Kramer MPX tape on here, and this is just basically to smooth the transient and, and make it a little bit warmer. So here it is with no MPX on it, and with it in. So the MPX kind of just smooths out the transient and uh, just makes it a little bit warmer sounding. Kind of rounds it off at the beginning. Here it is with it out. And with it in. And then again, I've also got the CLA 76 on this, and this is just to bring a little bit more of that transient back in. Got a bit of a slower attack happening, faster release. And slam it down on it. This kind of helps bring up a little bit of the room sound as well. Now the snare sample is placed pretty low in the context of the mix. If you look at the, the actual faders here, we got our snare top cranked quite a bit. Snare bottom's just in there enough to add the crack. And then the snare sample's in there just to add a little bit of room. So let's listen to what these all sound like together. So first the snare top. Snare bottom. And then I'll add the sample. And I'm also sending all of these guys to a drum verb. And this drum verb is just alt -a verb right here. And I've got it set to an AMS RMX 16 setting here. It's a, um, a nonlinear verb set at 0.77 seconds. And that just kind of adds a little bit of size here. So let me bypass that and I'll, we can hear what it sounds like dry and with it in. So this is dry. And with it in. It's kind of got that gated verb sound. Make it more like a shotgun. So now let's listen to it in the context of the mix. Take out all of the plugins and I'll reintroduce them and you can hear what they're sounding like. It's time. 
So there you go guys, that's how you can mix a snare into a dense rock mix and get it to sound beefy, get the attack off of it, and really make it poke through those heavy guitar layers and all that kind of stuff. If this is your first time hearing about Master Your Mix, check out the website MasterYourMix.com and while you're there, sign up at the top of the page. There's a free download for the Ultimate Mixing Blueprint that is essentially just a cheat sheet to show you what to do with EQ and compression and how to dial in settings so that you can get things sounding great in your mixes. And once you download that, you'll also be added to the mailing list where I send out all of my best free content, all sorts of videos and tips and tricks to try in your mixes. So give it a shot and we'll talk soon.